Let's get started with animation. Hi folks. Quite often you see in the movies uh, growing tattoos on, on arms of uh, the actors, etc. That's a post-production thing. And uh, one of the com most complex structures you can create with just a single click come from paint effects. And I'll show you a little bit about rendering curves, etc. It's all connected to the paint effects, which were developed by Duncan Brinsmead in the, I think early 2000s. You need to be under modeling for that and you go to generate because all the paint effects stuff is starting in the middle of this large menu here. And uh, well, paint effects tool, make paintable, get brush, etc. We start with get brush. And it starts with this not really very sexy uh, thumbnail sort of <laughs> selection. And uh, we can choose anything here, basically, for example, trees and uh, any kind of trees, the bamboo, mill. I just single click it on it and uh, then you can paint the trees on the grid. You see that uh, red circle here. It is, well, a representation of the size of your brush. And if you press and hold B for brush and move the with a with the left mouse button um, pressed you can uh, well you can rescale it so this is going to be a big tree and there's a smaller tree uh, i just plant the trees that right here and this is the magic of paint effects it doesn't look that good here because they're all selected the stroke bamboo one in this case when you click somewhere here in the open you already see that it's quite a nice um, selection of trees here we We'll uh, invoke the attribute editor now, control A, and in the control, uh, in the attribute editor, you find interesting things, and one is the end bound section. When you reduce the maximum clip um, value from 1 to 0, you reduce the development of the trees. And uh, the same applies from the other side, so to say when you use the minimum minimum clip. So they basically uh, clean up the scene from both sides, from, from the left to the right, or from the right to the left. So that's a very powerful tool. And what I can do now, for example, is I just um, go to zero. We're at frame one here in the animation. Right mouse click, I set a key. So it's uh, underlined, uh, un underlaid with red. Now I go to frame 200 and I make it a, a value 1. Now this is the animation and I deselect the trees. So there are lots of things you can do with the trees. Once you select them, you can go to bamboo in this case. It's different with other uh, objects. You can uh, paint, for example. Here you have the global scale. This is basically how you start it with the size of the brush. And uh, here is the twist, for example, forward twist. And uh, now you twist the trees, you turn them round so they, you can animate this um, as well, of course. Twist rate here. If we get a little bit closer here, select this, that means we deselect the actual uh, stroke. So I think we don't need this. Uh, go to twist again. So this is really nice. And uh, some of the paint effects objects, like most of the trees, really have wind in, inside. So uh, they're moving, the leaves move with the wind anyway. Now, um, when we want to render this, let's go to the render settings. And the default render, of course, is Arnold. If I render it with Arnold, render the scene, it's it's totally black. There's no light in the scene, but we can introduce a light, Skydome light. And then we Arnold render it again. And it's rendering in one second, pure white. Because 
Arnold does not support rendering paint effects objects. But we can go to Maya software and uh, we can render it here with the I IPR and we get a qu quite a nice thing. I did many tutorials about paint effects and uh, about rendering. But the interesting thing if we want to grow a tattoo with a complex structure on an, on an arm for example, we need to render things in Arnold. So we go back to Arnold now, Arnold Renderer, which doesn't help us here. I want to make the light invisible here in the viewport, that's why I deactivate it. And uh, now I convert all the objects here and all the leaves and all the stems into curves. I need to select this stroke and now I go to Modify, Convert and down here you have paint effects to curves. You can use the option box, doesn't help a lot, hide the strokes, that's not bad. And I apply it and close it. It takes a while because we have many curves here, as you can see. Now we have the curves and we don't see the leaves anymore. And the curves, of course, can be rendered in Arnold, but let's render it again. It's again white we don't see them because we need to check on the visibility of the curves. Which one is this? Let's make a, yeah, there's a more prominent one right here in the middle. Uh, I selected curve 15 in my case and uh, I go to Arnold here. It's the curve shape and here I have an Arnold section and that's very important for rendering things in Arnold and I just tick on render curve. And now when I render the scene, I see that <laughs> single curve here, which is quite nice in fact. Now I want to apply the render curve to all the curves and that's a really tricky thing. So I select them all. Whoops, 800. 880 curves. Plus, I think there are even more here. Yeah. We have even more curves here. Let me select them too. So it's 3000 curves and I think I can deselect the group here. Maybe not necessary. When I click here now, render curve, it does not apply to all curves. So when I render it, I get two curves now because the first one I selected in that big selection procedure now uh, was obviously this one here. Uh, but uh, we're far away, far from the selection of all of the objects. You might think Control A gives you the channel box where you can you see curves uh, with three dots. That means many are selected and the channel box shows us that we uh, selected them all. But uh, here we don't see the Arnold settings. So uh, here we can change the rotation in Y, for example. If we change this from 0 to 90, for example, 90 degrees, they would all, all curves would rotate by 90 degrees. But uh, we want to render them. And the trick is not very obvious. Uh, and I read it somewhere in the Arnold documentation. What you need to do is you create something that means with all the curves selected, you create a set. And I rarely use the sets, but here they are very, very usable. So here I use the option box and I call it curve set. And I apply it and close. Now what I've done, nothing changes in the scene, but all the way down here you see a curve set. And when you select that, all of the objects are in that group as well as up here. So you see them all here. So select the curve set. Control A gives me the attribute editor and here I have an Arnold section. And there's nothing about renderable curves here. That's why I need to add something. Let's click here, add. And we want to override attributes for all individual curves and the individual uh, curves have the attribute don't render me. That's why we override this value for all the curves in our set. And we all we need to do is find it here and it's right here AI render curve. 
AI is always for, stands for Arnold. So we apply this, we add it, and now we have extra attribu attributes here, and our AI render curve is here. But now when we tick AI render curve here and render the scene, all of our curves are being rendered. It's still rendering. This is pretty lovely. And imagine this is all animated, so you can use it in many contexts. 17 seconds to render. So we have all curves made renderable now. 3000 or how many. Uh, if you want to make them bigger, you need to add another attribute here, and that is the size, which is called the AI curve width. So I add this. It's a shader thing because uh, Arnold takes care of the size of the the width of the curves. So I add this attribute as well. So you have it right here now in the extra attributes, AI curve width. It's currently set to 0 0.01. And when we set it to 0 0.1, make it 10 times bigger and render the scene again, we get much bigger curves. Of course, you can animate this as well. If you want to change the shader, you need to add another attribute here called AI Curve Shader. We add this and we have it here, the Curve Shader. When we give it a, say, ramp from black to white or let's say from a light blue to white and we render it again we have a, an all more or less light blue scene here does it have an alpha channel well view alpha channel no it doesn't and the reason is that we have the sky dome in the background. In order to get rid of that sky dome, we need to select it and go down here to the visibility in the camera. This is the camera. We're looking through our camera into the scene and we reduce the value of the camera visibility of our light to zero. That means it still has effect on the whole object objects in the scene but it's not visible anymore that means it's not bright anymore so let's re-render it and this is the alpha channel now compositing is a, is a totally different topic really and I hope this was already quite helpful for you uh, if you create a new scene and go back to the modeling part under generate you get a brush and that brush can be quite wild for example fun or just search for for example crack it's not the drug that's the crack here and the mel script that's the um, the pencil we're going to use and now we create an object for example a helix and you see the brush is already active and uh, we need to make this paintable so it's selected gen uh, generate and then make paintable now we can paint on that object rather than painting on the grid you see when I hover the mouse over the grid it doesn't show me that circle but now it does Again, when you deselect it, you already have a really interesting structure here and um, hide the helix. And of course, you can make it grow. You have that minimal clip and maximum clip part here. Uh, and uh, you can imagine how you can make it grow on an arm without a compositing effect. You can also render this in a flat way, 2D-ish, and then import the sequence into another scene where you just have the arm with a shader and then you layer it on top of that arm using either a layer shader or the coat feature of a standard Arnold shader and uh, under coat you find the color and you can map that color with your texture which you've created 
using the paint effects. Well, I hope that made your day. It certainly did make my day. Bye bye. I like this music. If you don't like it, I don't care. This is computer animation.